Today we are going to be making puppy chow and we're actually going to be making two different types of puppy chow. So we're gonna have your traditional puppy chow and your cookies and cream or Oreo puppy chow. We're gonna be making it for the masses. So we're gonna make two full boxes to have quite a bit of it. So to get started, you're going to need per batch, you're gonna need a box of rice squares or checks and then some Oreos. I just got a regular container of Oreos. We got gluten-free because my husband is gluten-free, but you don't have to have that. Um, a regular thing of Oreos will work just fine. Some white chocolate chips and some powdered sugar. And then for the regular puppy chow or the more popular puppy chow, you will need another box of cereal, some peanut butter, some chocolate chips. I'm using dark chocolate because it's just my preference. And then again, some more powdered sugar. So um, you'll also need um, a large mixing bowl and some large Ziploc bags. But let's go ahead and get started. So I started with the Oreo batch because it was the type I was looking forward to the most. So I started by separating the cookie from the cream, as you can see here. And I put the cookie in a Ziploc bag for reasons you will see shortly later. But, um, and then I also put the cream in a bowl so that I could go back later and put in some chocolate chips. So that's what I'm doing here. I was following a recipe off of Pinterest and um, I later on, you'll see me a little bit later on, I add more chocolate chips than it said to only because I just felt like it was necessary. So I'm microwaving that here. Um, has anybody ever made um, like puppy chow whenever you were growing up? I feel like I made that all the time when I was in high school. And um, actually the recipes all on Pinterest said to have a large bowl so that you could mix it. I think whenever I made it in high school, I just added the cereal into the plastic bag and then just like dumped all of the chocolate into the bag and shook it up and then added the powdered sugar. I don't know, do it however you would like. So I microwaved the chocolate in 30 second increments so that it didn't burn or anything like that and then set it aside. I tried doing like a layering situation where I dumped in the cereal first and then a little bit of the chocolate and then cereal and chocolate and all of that. And um, I don't know if it made any sort of difference. Basically, I just tried it to see if it helped it mix. Um, I did it the normal way with the um, regular original puppy chow recipe and um, I, don't, I don't think it made a big difference. So, um, that is what I'm doing here. I got rave reviews about the Oreo one. Also, the gluten-free Oreos. I don't know if anybody's gluten-free or has tried the gluten-free Oreos, but they taste just like normal Oreos. Like, you really can't taste the flavor difference at all. So, highly recommend if you um, are gluten-free. They're really good. So, um, I do wish that I bought two bags of the white chocolate chips only because when I was mixing this, which like I said, you'll see in a minute, I ended up adding the rest of the bag of chocolate chips um, to the bowl, but I still feel like it probably could have even used a little bit more so than that, just because I really like my cereal to be fully saturated in chocolate because then I, I just feel like it's better, it tastes better. There was still a little bit of spots on the cereal that wasn't completely coated, um, even after adding more chocolate. So that's the only reason I say. Like I said, I was following a recipe, but um, you know, do it with your heart. <laughs> Measure with your heart. So my son wanted to help me make the puppy chow because who wouldn't? And um, so he came over and was wanting to lick the spoon actually <laughs> to start. 
but um, I told him that he was gonna be able to help me out in just a minute, so he's kind of standing around and waiting for his time. So, we're coming back to the Ziploc bag full of Oreo cookies. And basically, you just want to, you don't have to put them in a plastic bag. That's just what I did because I didn't feel like getting out my like food processor to chop up the Oreo cookies. I felt like I could just bang them out and my son would have a great time doing that. So, I let him go ahead and do that. I was trying to do no muss, no fuss, you know, no mess. So he is kind of banging that all out for me. So once you get all of those, you know, and another thing too, I kind of wish that I set some aside. So the recipe I was following called for 25 Oreos for the recipe. And I, if you get a batch that's bigger, if you get like a bigger batch, I would recommend almost holding a couple Oreos aside. That way you can use it as like a topping and like just have it more Oreo cookie like. But um, I got the gluten free and you can only get, I didn't want to get two full bags of gluten free Oreos. We just didn't need it. But next time I will probably do that. I'll get more than just one box so that I can garnish it a little bit better. But um, with that being said, Sorry, a <laughs> kiddo came and uh, needed my assistance. So what I was going to say though is that if I was to do this again, um, I would get two containers of Oreos for garnishing, but also something that I did go ahead and do with this recipe is I got the double stuffed Oreos. I don't know if you noticed that um, in the beginning or anything like that. I got double stuffed because I wanted more cream to go in with the, the, the chocolate. So, because I really wanted that Oreo flavor to come through as much as possible, obviously. But, um, like I said, I got rave review, raved reviews um, from family. We actually took this to a party. Um, it was actually an outdoor movie night type situation. So, there's like blow up pools and like a blow up screen and projector. It was really neat. So anyways, back to the topic here. I'm now dividing the powder. I added powdered sugar in with the Oreo, with the mashed up Oreo, and just kind of mix those two together. And now I'm dividing them between two bags, two large Ziploc bags. That way I can equally make sure everything's tossed into the topping. And um, I'm also, so I was afraid there was going to be holes in the bag that we used to smash up the Oreos. So I'm just transferring it out of that bag and into a, a different bag. Um, but I divided the powder into two different Ziplocs so that we could divide the chocolate coated cereal into two different Ziplocs to make sure it was evenly coated. So that is what I'm doing here. So once the last little bit is in the bags, we're gonna go ahead and zip them up and then you're gonna do the classic thing and you are just gonna shake them all up. So you wanna make sure that you keep some air in the bag so that it allows everything to move better, um, you know, so you can really mix everything around. So I'm having Henry help me with that as well. It's another good one for him. So we're just shaking them all up real good. And um, we actually ended up poking a hole in one of them. I'm not sure which one it is, but we find out that there's a hole in one. So we have to yet again switch out the bag so that we don't lose a bunch of stuff. Oops, phone's making noises here. So we end up getting another bag and switching that one out. But 
Um, all in all, it looks really good when it's finished. It has like, you can see all the little cookie pieces on the cereal and like in the mix still. Like there is some small chunks of Oreo that didn't fully get ground up, I suppose. And so it, it looks really good. <laughs> Henry was like, I wanna, I wanna try it, I wanna try it. Like he's sitting there patiently waiting so that he can get into it and try it all out. So, all right, we're gonna just finish shaking this one up and then we are going going to go ahead and get started on the other one there. So I just cleaned up the same few bowls and spatulas and things like that so I don't have to keep doing dishes, but this time I decided to just dump all of the cereal into the bowl to save myself some time because last time I had to sit there and wait with the melted chocolate to open up the cereal. Not that it took that much time, but I don't want to allow the chocolate mixture too much time to set and cool. Um, I want to get it straight on to the cereal. So I did that. So this recipe called for one cup of peanut butter and one cup of chocolate chips. I just eyeballed it because this is like a crowd pleaser. This is like the one that I know would be a hit. So um, I just eyeballed the peanut butter and I used the full bag of chocolate chips just because I wanted to make sure that it was tasty. <laughs> so I went ahead and microwave that for 30 seconds and then took it out and tried to stir it up a little bit and then I'm gonna stick it back in for another 30 seconds mine only took the two times to get it fully microwaved but I guess it would just depend on your microwave so get that all mixed up and it's all chocolatey and um, then you just dump it on in there this one's really super simple this is the one that I was talking about earlier. I made this all the time in high school for like potlucks and classroom snacks and things like that. I don't know if anybody else did stuff like that, but me and my friends always just made, we had like lunchtime potlucks. So we would just all prepare different things and bring it. And mine was always the puppy chow because it's so simple and easy and a crowd pleaser, like I said. So this one, I also decided to do puppy chow for this because it was going to be for a movie night as I had mentioned and it's just super easy to kind of like divide it all up into like cups or bags or whatever and to munch on and a little goes a long way, especially with little hands and things like that. So it was just really easy. It's really nice for stuff like that. Um, it's all, it's really good for movie nights if you don't want to spend a bunch of money on candy at the movies make this before you go what a hit so now I'm just mixing it all up as you'll be able to likely see this gets way more coated than the Oreo one did which is why I had said I think you would probably need closer to at least one and a half bags of the chocolate chips the white chocolate chips for the Oreo one because I think it could have it could have been more thoroughly coated um but you know live and learn so Mixing it all up real good. Henry's sitting there like ready. He, he kept begging me. He's like, can I please lick the spoon? Can I lick the spoon? I'm like, well, I have to stir it all up first. So we're stirring it all up and getting it all mixed in. And he wanted to mix it while I got out the Ziploc bags. So as far as the powdered sugar amounts goes, I just did, I think I did a little, I think I did a cup per bag. So two cups for the whole batch. Yeah, honestly, I think I did too much because I don't know. I feel like maybe there was a little bit of extra, but is that bad? I don't know. I don't feel like it's bad to have a little extra topping or whatever you want to call it. So, um, you know, like I said, measure with your heart. It doesn't matter. People will eat it. So, and then you just dump it in just the same. So good. My mother-in-law loves peanut butter. I am not a huge peanut butter fan, which is another reason why I decided to go with the Oreo 
one because I knew it was a, a peanut butter free recipe. I think I did see on Pinterest though there are Oreo puppy chows that do still call for the chocolate and peanut butter mixture and then you just chop up the Oreos you know full you don't separate the cream and cookie and all that you know I just picked that one because like I said I, I don't, I'm not a huge peanut butter fan so I figured that would that would be good for somebody who doesn't like peanut butter or you know peanut butter allergies or whatever um so but my mother-in-law, she loves peanut butter, and so I knew I had to really go hard on the peanut butter chocolate. So now Henry gets to lick his little spoon that he's been waiting on all that time. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same and leave some air in that Ziploc and just shake them all up real good. Get them nice and thoroughly coated. So all the recipes that I saw on Pinterest said for you to mix them all up really good and then once they're fully mixed, go and like debag them, lay them out on like a cookie sheet and let them rest for like one to two hours. I didn't do that because I made this at like 9.30 at night and I was ready to go to bed. So what I did was the next morning I just opened up the bags and kind of let them air out for a little while and this is what they looked like in the end. This was the next day. That is the, the original. And then this is the Oreo. So really, really good. Got high, high praise. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Have you ever made puppy chow? I would love to know.